I will lift up my voice with a song I will push against the darkness Push against despair I will sing of the good things of the Lord Oh, I will sing Hi everyone, my name is Amber Pierce and this is my husband Daniel Pierce. We want to welcome you to From the Gates of Jerusalem and we're doing something a little bit different today. We are in Texas and we're at the Global Sphere Center. This is our home church, Glory of Zion, and we just wanted to share with you uh, what's going on in our lives, what's going on in Jerusalem, and why we're in Texas. We are actually in Texas just enjoying our family, our friends, our home church. And at the same time, God has been working on behalf of the body in Israel as we have uh, built a ministry center there. It was so interesting how we began that process. We began building it there and it got 50% uh, to completion. And then it was time to come back to Texas and be with our family and our friends here. And God is just really doing a lot Something that's amazing is that he can be doing a lot of different things at one time. We don't have to be there for him to complete a project that we've finished. And so Daniel's going to share a little bit with you about where we're at in the completion of that project. Um, the ministry center in Jerusalem, the Glory of Zion ministry center there. Well, we've been working on the new building for several weeks now, and I just got a call from a friend of mine in Israel the other day, and he said that in just about two to three days, the facility will actually be ready to use. Uh, he's the one in charge of sound and wiring, and they've got the entire building complete, and uh, I said that all of the sound equipment's there and the instruments, and uh, that we're ready to worship the Lord. So we're really excited to be worshiping in Israel. Something that God has been showing me as we've gone into the the neighborhood that the Lord really chose for this worship, this worship center. Um, you know, whenever Daniel and I had first moved to Israel, I was pregnant with his, with Elijah, with our, our son. And I never wanted to go into this neighborhood because it's industrial. There's a lot of people there. It's crowded. There's a big shopping mall, grocery store, um, everything that you need, you would go to this neighborhood to get. And I never wanted to go there with Daniel and he would just go run errands. And, uh, <laughs> And um, so it's so funny how God always puts you in a place that you say you'll never go. I always said, I don't want to go there. I'll never go there. But this is the place that God chose for this ministry center. And I believe that he chose this space. The reason is because that's where all the people are. There's a lot of people there. There's a lot of buzz there. It never really shuts down. It's open until later ends of the night. You can even be, we can do anything we want, even on Shabbat uh, there. And so I think the Lord has really strategically placed us in the place that we'll be in. And we've changed the identity of the uh, place that we're gonna be um, worshiping completely. It was a furniture warehouse and we took the ceilings out of this ministry center and we uh, put new flooring in, we put new bathrooms in, we put um, rooms that can be used for green rooms or for children and, and it will be the glory of Zion ministry center in Jerusalem. So I have been feeling like God is showing me more how he's bringing a lot of us through this uh, waiting period as he is securing our identity. The identity of this place in Jerusalem is being secured for the body of Messiah in Israel, but also worldwide. And so we, God has been securing that for us, but also he's doing the same thing in us because um, as Chuck Pierce, my father-in-law always says, whatever you see happen in Israel, you'll see happen all around the world and you'll see it happen personally in your own life. And so I can see in my own life, in our family, and in lots of people around me that I know, God is securing uh, your destiny. And that's a lot of what this is about. He's securing your identity. So where our identities get shaky and we're not really sure what's happening. And sometimes the devil would like to make you forget who you are or uh, you don't know who you are. Um, God is coming in right now to define who you are and make your 
your foundation very stable for the future so that you can accomplish all the things that he promised that you would, that you can accomplish things that you thought you never could. And so we're excited to be a part of um, God accomplishing his plans and the earth from Jerusalem in you and I just uh, feel like this is a very deep work that God is doing in a lot of people. It's not um, a, a quick surface level work. It's a very deep, long work because there's a lot to come for all of us. Amen. Just like Amber said, uh, as we've gone through this process over the last several months, we've been in a time, and everyone I think that we know right now has been in a time of transition, which uh, a lot of times those times of transition aren't the easiest things that we go through in life, but the Lord takes that time and He uses it uh, to make us who we're supposed to be and to complete our lives in ways that uh, we never could have imagined before. And what I've really been hearing from the Lord uh, over the last several days is to find our identity in worship. And that's something that I'm hanging on to that I really feel like I've heard the Lord say and as we complete the center in Jerusalem and begin mm -hmm. to worship there again uh, as we have in the past I think that he's going to bring us to uh, to new places in our life and the verse that the Lord gave me this morning was Psalms 115 where it talks about the nations coming together to worship and the joy that that produces in the land and uh, that's something that I really feel like the Lord's saying so go and read Psalms 115 today uh, there's another verse that the Lord's really shown me and that's Isaiah 61 uh, where he says the spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. And uh, the word sovereignty uh, really is a final word. So when we hear the Lord speak something into the earth that's, uh, that's a finality, we can hang on to that and we can trust that the Lord will be true to His word. Uh, that's what we've done uh, with this ministry center and that's the desire that we have for it, to see that completed. And uh, it sounds like it's, it's getting completed pretty quickly. So yeah. uh, our biggest disappointment in that is just that we're not there today to see it, but hopefully we will be soon. And uh, you can all continue to pray for us. Uh, the last verse that the Lord really had on my heart was Psalms 51, um, where it says that we'll find our joy and salvation, a renewed joy and salvation. So uh, can we just pray that over Jerusalem today? I feel like that's uh, our heart for the ministry center and its purpose and being there is uh, just a renewed joy for salvation in that city. So let's lift that up. Yeah, there's one more scripture before we pray that I want to share um, because sometimes I know we can get weary while we're waiting and whenever I think about Jesus, um, there's a scripture that says that he, um, he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. So he endured all the pain, all the trials, all the struggles um, because there was a joy set before him and his joy was our freedom. His joy was our healing. His joy was our eternity. And I, I'm saying the word was, but really I should be saying is, because his joy is our freedom, it's our healing, it's eternity. And so um, as we pray, I want you to receive that because I feel, you know, a lot of us forget why we're doing all that we're doing. We forget why are we um, laying down our lives? Why are we struggling? Why are we going through all these obstacles? But there, there's a reason. We're supposed to, we're supposed to be like Jesus, and he, he endured the pain of the cross for the joy that was set before him. And so we just want to impart to you the finishing ability um, to go through the cross and to go through it with the joy that's set before you, to endure it with the joy that's set before you. Amen. Lord, we just lift up Jerusalem right now. Uh, we pray as this ministry center gets started that uh, every will that you have for this place would just be fulfilled, Lord. Uh, we pray that your uh, your word would ring true in Jerusalem, Lord, that your sovereign word would come to that city. We pray and uh, we lift up the city that uh, the joy of your salvation would become manifest in whole new ways, Lord, uh, that have never been seen there and never been experienced there. Uh, we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the vision that you have for this facility, and we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of and also, I'm just so grateful that I get to be in uh, the United States while we're seeing things take a turn. Uh, we're seeing like we're seeing declarations being made where the hearts of people are being turned back to to God's firstborn nation, back to Israel. And we haven't seen that in a while. And so I'm grateful that we get to be here and we get to um, celebrate with 
uh, the place that we come from. We come from America and we're here at Glory of Zion, which has always been a place that uh, that stands with Israel. And so I'm grateful to see the blessing of God um, and to see God's promises true even for America. I know a lot of people had um, we didn't know what was going to happen here. We didn't know what was going to happen in America, but God came through and the covenant with Israel is being reinforced. And so mm -hmm. we're grateful for that. And uh, we just want you to be grateful with us and be blessed. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, we'll